Today I'm going to derive three common entropy equations. This is all about calculations. If you're looking for a verbal explanation of entropy, go somewhere else. The first two equations that I want to derive are expressed by the equation you see. <clears throat> the change in entropy, delta S, is equal to the heat capacity times the log of temperature 2 over temperature 1 minus the gas constant times the log of pressure 2 over pressure 1. Now this is really two equations because we'll see that at constant temperature you're left with just the rightmost term, that's this one right here, and at constant pressure you're left with just the leftmost term, or this, the leftmost of the right-hand terms, that's this one right here. This equation will be useful because it can be used to solve many of the problems that you get in entropy. In a later video I will solve a few of those problems for you. Now in thermodynamics we try not to memorize everything, but there are a few equations that you probably need to know just to get through the course. The first one is the definition of enthalpy. Enthalpy is internal energy plus pressure times volume. You also need to know the first law. The change in internal energy is a change in heat plus a change in work. Enthalpy at constant pressure is one you probably have known actually for a long time. You might, you might have thought of it other than at constant pressure, but it's the constant pressure heat capacity times the change in temperature. Finally, there's the definition of entropy. DS is the change in heat over temperature. We're going to use these four laws, or, or equations, if you will, in our derivation of this big thing up here. And um, I'll introduce each of the equations in turn as we use it. OK, so let's get started. We're going to take the enthalpy equation, and we're going to take the derivative of it. So we have dH is equal to du, and then we're going to take the full derivative of p times v, so that's pdv plus vdp. And then the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pdv and the vdp and move them to the other side over here with the dH. So I have dH minus pdv minus vdp, and that's equal to the change in internal energy. All right, next we're going to take the first law, du is equal to dq plus dw. And we're going to start making substitutions into it. So in place of du, we're going to put what we have up here. This is dH minus PDV minus VDP. You can see dH minus PDV minus VDP equal to dQ. There's the dQ. And this is the dW. We're going to substitute in the actual work term of minus PDV. Then we're going to do an algebra simplification. Basically, you see that we have minus PDV on both sides of the equation, so we're just going to lose that. That's going to give us dH minus VDP is equal to dQ. Then finally, we're just going to rotate this equation around, and so we will have dQ is equal to dH minus VDP. And this is a, a restatement of the first law. Believe it or not, some people actually call this the first law. I don't choose to remember this, but if you do choose to remember it, you can actually save a lot of time right here. All right, now we're going to pick up that enthalpy term at constant pressure, and notice that that dH is the same as that dH, so we're going to substitute in the CPDT in place of that, and you can see down here I've got dQ is equal to, instead of dH, I've got CPDT. Meanwhile, and likewise, I'm going to take this V term, and I'm going to use the ideal gas law. So V is RT over P. This is all at one molar. Everything on this page is at one molar. So V is RT over P. That's pressure. And we're going to say minus RT over P instead of V. And I will have completed this substitution for the change in heat. All right, the next thing I want to do is divide through by temperature. When I divide dQ by temperature, I'm going to get dS. I'm going to get the change in entropy. When I divide Cp dT by temperature, we'll get Cp dT over T. And we, uh, this other term on the right, we'll get RT over PT. And of course, those two Ts cancel. And so with the substitution of dS for dQ dT, we wind up with dS is equal to Cp dT over temperature minus the gas constant over pressure 
terms of change in pressure. All right, now we're ready to integrate this. You knew this couldn't stay easy forever. So here I've shown the integral, and the reason I've drawn it out explicitly is because I wanted to show that when you have a, a change in temperature or a change in pressure, if temperature were constant, this whole term would become zero, and the integral would just be equal to that term, and vice versa. If pressure were constant, this whole term would become zero, and everything would only be equal to that term. So there really are two equations here, even though they happen to be combined into one. So when I actually carry out the integral, we get delta S instead of ds is equal to Cp, and then we're assuming a, a, a constant Cp here. If Cp weren't constant, you'd have to integrate that with respect to temperature too. That's probably in a later course. With respect to a constant uh, uh, heat capacity, then it's Cp log of temperature 2 over temperature 1. Temperature 2 is your final temperature. Temperature 1 is your starting temperature, also called your initial temperature. Minus R1 times the log of pressure 2 over pressure 1. And again, it's most likely that you'll see this or use this as two different equations, one at constant temperature or one at constant pressure. Finally, I want to get an equation for volume out of this whole thing, and so I'm going to introduce the pressure-volume relationship. We have that pressure 1 times volume 1 is pressure 2 times volume 2. By algebra, V1 over V2 is P2 over P1. Up here, I've got P2 over P1, but what I want to do is use the negative log to, in order to invert the V2 over V1. So since I've got a negative log of P2 over P1, that's going to be a positive log of V2 over V1. I'll introduce as a replacement up there, we're going to be working at constant temperature, so we're going to have delta S is equal to the gas constant times the log of V2 over V1. So that's all there is for this video. Soon I will see if I can't put together some problem sets that use these equations and show you some examples in real life of how they get used. Thank you.